Hello, everybody, and welcome to Rise of the Podcast. I am Jeremy. I'm Tara. And I'm Keith. <laughs> oh, and somebody, did somebody freeze this thing, or what's going on here? Did oh, somebody, nope. they did freeze it. Ryan, right off the bat, froze it. <laughs> Don't mind. I told you, it's crazy, Keith. Can they still hear us? Oh, yeah. Yeah, they can still All hear right. us, but with, uh, the, for some reason, the freeze asset didn't pop up, but we are frozen. <laughs> and I definitely... I'm so used to coming in after Jeremy and Keith, you were supposed to go next. And I it's was okay. just like, oh, I, I love your face. The face. <laughs> <laughs> what, what's even... How do we? It's oh, right there. My you can gosh. see it. No, well, Jeremy's it's... bald in it. Yeah. <laughs> well, he's bald put in every bald, freeze frame. Bald filter and freeze it. Ryan. For some reason. You suck, man. Just kidding. <laughs> you, pu- you pulled off the bald filter and the freeze. What I'm trying to figure out is there's a thing. I had to look over. I was like, wait, okay, yeah, yeah. he's not bald. Okay. No, not that bald. <laughs> not that bald. <laughs> <laughs> nope, I have plenty of hair at the moment. No, there's well, Snapchat. Strange. Now you are in for a treat. Oh, man. Oh, we're unfrozen. Here we go. We're back. Ooh. Oh. Nope. nope. What? Hold on. It's back to the original picture. Did you freeze it again just so you could? Oh, there's a banana There's now. a banana. Why does it keep picking me for all the Snapchat <laughs> filters? Yeah. Because. Is that me still? Oh, yeah, it's still me. Anyways, well, hello, everybody. We have Keith on, who kind of extremely just ju- jumped over. And so, yeah, it, if I close my eyes, somebody else will take it over. So if I go like this. No, uh, it's on your It's on your. It's angle. on your camera. Oh, it's on my angle. Okay, there we go. But now oh, if you do it, uh, somebody else. Oh, now it's on camera. Okay, now hold on. Not to me. Now- <laughs> oh, Keith doesn't have a face, apparently. Yeah, it must not be able to find my face. Oh. Hey, hey, hey. There, there we go. go. What's going on, everybody? I know Keith is a banana. I'm a creepy banana. So what are we talking about? Well, we're going to kick off with some Star Wars. We are a Star Wars podcast, and we have an unwritten rule that we have to keep talking about Star Wars or we will lose our, our street to be cred. the Star Wars podcast. So, Chris, what do you have for us tonight? All right. <laughs> Today, we are talking about... The top 15 ships of Star Wars, as according to Screen Rant. See, now this is where the Falcon belongs. We did characters. This is where the Falcon belongs. You guys are going to get divorced. The Falcon made it on as a character? The boys wanted it on as a character. And I was like, no! It's definitely a character. Hey, that was was a (laughs) Darwin-worthy voice break. (laughs) Oh, Dave doesn't want us to be in the light. Who Dave. Doesn't? Dave. Oh, Dave, shutting the lights off. How, how much money does it cost to shut off the lights? Yeah, nothing. It's tangent crystals. Oh, so there, there, yes, yeah, so you can do 3,000 tangent crystals, which takes a while to accumulate, or a dollar. Oh, uh, okay. So is this like uh, Reddit karma? Kind of, yep. like, yeah. Got it. Okay. Yep, absolutely. The I'm, longer they watch, you get more points. I'm and, new to Twitch, you guys. Yep. Oh, it's, it's mind bogglingly crazy. Yep. You do lots of things, lots and lots of things. All right, so whilst we're in the dark, the the number 15 ship of Star Wars, of all 16 ships in Star Wars, these are the top 15. <laughs> <laughs> the 15th best Star Wars starship is the Nebulon B frigate, also known as the Medical Frigate. The thing looks like so, a drill. Keith, put you on the spot. Is that at the very beginning of A New Hope? That it nope. is. Empire it's at the end back. of episode five. Oh, oh, yeah, Where yeah. Looking out the window and Lucas. Yeah, new Luke's hand. got his new hand. Yep. That was a. Why is that even on the list? <laughs> That's just like they just ran out of ships. That That's what I'm saying. Names. There's like 16 ships in the top 15. I'm gonna go free. I okay, wonder what sure. didn't make the list then. <laughs> Uh, that's a good question. I, I should have a master list of all of the, uh, Ooh, there it oh, is. Uh, blinded okay. by the light. So do you think that that, so he says, you no, wonder why, does, do you guys think that it should be on the list? I definitely think 15 is too high. Comic-Con this did fine. do a, like Lego and did a Comic-Con exclusive of that ship. You could only get it at Comic-Con. <laughs> well, Dave says the light hurts his hands. That's why he shut them off. <laughs> <laughs> That's so funny. If you hadn't heard, my poor friend started his hands on fire with me, hanging out with me. So, Oh, Jesus. Yeah. But they're good. They're much better now. So. <laughs> <laughs> I got better. I got better. <laughs> <laughs> she turned me into a newt. Uh, so, <laughs> um, once you see what has, like, what, as we're going through this list, and you'll realize there's some things that haven't made it, you'll agree with me that this does not deserve to be on the list. <laughs> There are so many ships that are better than this ship. (laughs) All right. I'm sure. Okay. All right. Number 14, the Lambda class shuttle, like Darth Vader flies down. That should be higher. I agree. That should probably be higher. It's a pretty iconic ship. It is. 
Yeah, that's I mean, a cool ship. On. Okay. It's it's the one that made the. Yeah, yeah, it does the. Yeah. yeah. Yep. Also, yeah, it goes from like a one kind of triangle to a different kind of triangle. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly, exactly. I think that should have been higher, but I mean, we'll see what else is on here. That's a good ship, though. I like that It is a good ship. ship. I yeah. think it's, yeah. Having seen the list, I definitely think it could go up a few spots. Okay. Shuttle Tideria, that's what they took down to Tiberius. the Tiberius. Of- Tiberius, that's the one they took Tiberius. The- Tiberius. Tiberius. T- Shuttle Moon of Endor. <laughs> All right, anyway, number, so that was number 14. 14. Number 13, the Y-Wing. Classic ship, should be higher. Yeah. I agree. So, uh, yeah, I mean, easy enough. Uh, number 12, the Super Star Destroyer. That's what Darth Vader's cruising around on. That's oh, probably an okay. okay spot for that one, I would say. So the thing about the Y-Wing is it was in A New Hope. It was X-Wings and Y-Wings that made the attack run on the Death yeah. Star. A-Wings from, like, Return of the Jedi and stuff, those weren't, mm-hmm. those made their appearance then. Y-Wing should be higher. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Any opinion, Keith? No, it's, that's a it's just cool a ship. ship. That's okay. a ship. Uh, so number, what were we on, 12? You just did uh, the Super Star Destroyer. Okay, so number 11, the A-Wing. A-Wing's Again, a that cool could, ship. That could be further back, though. Those At least the Y-Wing and A-Wing should. A-Wing's should like one of my favorite ships. I think that should be like number four. Yeah, See, yeah. these and these are all cool ships because they're all like original trilogy. Yes. They're all like yeah. rusty and kind of beat up and old. I'm really hoping that we're not going to hear any like glossy episode one ships. <laughs> like if any of those make it. From the list from here on, I'm really disappointed. The, the Naboo Starfighter. You've seen Mando, right? Yeah. They yeah. repurpose a Naboo Starfighter. Yeah, that's true, actually. That's a pretty cool ship. All right. Let's All right, see well, what's we'll, going on. We'll get there. Okay, so that was... So number 10, Classic Star Destroyer. This is now we're in the top 10 Classic Star Destroyer of coolest ships. I mean, I do... I, we have a Lego version of one. I do love Star Destroyers. Yeah, they're really cool. They're mm-hmm. beautiful. The Lego one might be more expensive than the one in the movie. <laughs> <laughs> It, uh, Probably it, bigger, too. Yeah. <laughs> that was actually it's one true. of my plus to the critiques of the Kenobi show was the appearance of a regular old Star Destroyer because it looked so good in modern day. There you go, Keith. Look at that filter. Yep. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> <laughs> it's like Planet of the Apes or something. It's, it's just called Smile. It's supposed to make your eyes like all buggy. and. <laughs> Anyways, all right. Star Destroyer, great ship. You think it belongs in Ever 10 or higher? <laughs> I think Eight. that's... You think so? I was gonna say I think that's fine where it is right now. But again, now. it helps to have the whole list. Yeah, I'm. I'm really. I'm yeah, so that we we can assess, but yeah. that's sort of like your first reaction thing here. This doesn't work so good in the wide, so I'm just gonna leave it on Jeremy for right now. <laughs> uh, so number nine, the CR90 Corvette, also Dumb. known as the blockade runner or the ship from the beginning of Episode Four. Oh, then that's a cool ship. That's cool. That's sure. a pretty cool ship. I would I'm, say. I mean, what's more iconic than those two together? The Star uh, Destroyer. So the, so the thing is, the two of them together, if it's just the ship by itself, you're like, lame. <laughs> it's, I don't think it deserves to be in the top 15. Carry I think on. that that's probably the weakest ship on here so far. Carry on. All right. So number eight, TIE Interceptor. That's, that's Kylo Ren's ship. Nope. That's the TIE Silencer. Oh, that's right. How do you guys know this? <laughs> the Interceptor. Oh yeah, I know what you're talking about. It's got the two... V's on the side. Or We're seen in Return of the Jedi as an answer to. to okay. Yeah. yeah. So all there's right, an original right. trilogy ship. Okay. Wow. They're cool, but I don't think they're For any cooler the than a regular too, TIE fighter. I played a game called Rogue Squadron, and as you played through it, you got to be each one of these ships. Yeah, I remember yeah. Rogue Squadron. Yeah. That was a cool game. Yep. All right. All right. So number eight is the B Wing. B Wing is a cool ship, but I agree, Chris. The A Wing and the Y Wing are better. Agreed. So B wing was the one where it's like it's it's in Return of the Jedi. It's got like the cockpit and like the center part like spins around. It's like that long arm. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. those are cool. It uh, it's kind of like the Boba Fett of ships. It's not. It doesn't make a humongous amount of appearances, but people have a humongous fan, like following for it. I actually I keep on expecting to hear Boba Fett, Boba Fett's ship on here. Oh, it's coming. The flying boot. Well, I mean, I, I I'm I continue to be surprised that it's like. As high, high it's climbing as high as it as it is, because obviously it's going to be on the list. Yep. So number six, classic Tie Fighter. Works there for me. We go. I think yeah. it's a top five ship, so it's pretty close to where I think <laughs> yeah. it should be. So. It, it, to me, it's one of the best sounds in all of sound effects. Yeah, mm-hmm. I totally it, agree. It's just so unbelievably cool when the thing's flying nope. through space. There's something. So now people can do drop. And you oh, drop the cool. email that you followed up with, and whoever gets in the pot the closest wins. But Wait, why didn't my drop work? I refreshed the cache. I saw a bunch of people were trying to do what? it. What? So. Going and back to the TIE Fetter sound, though, I think the new trilogy really utilized that they really did. well. They did. 
And I think each movie has a scene where it's like you hear that like, <laughs> yeah, this the, coming uh, from like far away. Yeah, and it, it like leads to this whole like action build up. So even though it was nuts, I mean, when he flew at Ray, even in the yeah, movie, I love that really scene. Cool. The, mm -hmm. Say what you want about the new trilogy. There are some of they're hit and miss, but that scene is so it's awesome. It's so good. Yeah. Um, and then equally, they also do that with the Falcon. The Falcon yes. sound effects. So John says my feet are cold, and he's got it's just two frames of socks and a cup. <laughs> so <laughs> for those of you who missed the Garfield too, minus do, Garfield. Uh, bang Garfield in chat. It'll come up with a Garfield minus Garfield. Nice. All right. So number five. Slave one. There it is. It's Boba, Boba Fett's Fett ship. ship. Oh, okay. I, yep. I think I, to me, that's classic. Love that ship. Have you I'm, seen the Bo book, book of Boba Fett? No, I haven't. Okay. I've seen both seasons of Mando, though. Okay. Um, there, you yeah. know, but you know the bomb from the prequel trilogy. Oh, yeah. The bomb is also one of my favorite sound effects. <clears> just the. <clears throat> yeah. Yeah, yeah. I love it. That's a good spot for that ship. Okay. Number four, the TIE Advance. Vader ship from A New Hope. Oh, cool. Yep. Now, do we like that more than the classic TIE fighter? I would actually. Have I would have the regular TIE fighter above that. I would. I'd say I would, that. Yep. Switch those two, maybe. Yep, okay. I agree. Uh, number three, the Death Star. That's not okay. Clear. No, I'm sorry. I was wondering if this was going to make it on as a ship. No. It's a ship. That's a, I think it's a ship. I mean, it is a ship, but I don't think it belongs number three. It's pretty oh. cool. It is, but I mean, there are cooler ships. I would, I mean. It's cool if your name is Peter Cushing and you don't wear boots on set. You wear slippers. You wear slippers. <laughs> I mean, I think Death Star should be number one, but I wasn't sure if it was going to qualify as a ship. <laughs> are you well, they put the super, uh, yeah. yeah. They, I mean, this, yeah. No, I mean, yeah, it's, it's cool, but I mean, this it is, made the, this thing's like practically a moon. Yeah, that's true. Yeah. That's no Come on. That's no moon. <laughs> That's no moon. It's a ship. <laughs> All right. What do we got for number two? Number two. Do you want to guess what number two is? The X-Wing. The X-Wing. Yeah. Solid. I, we all yeah. know what number one is. Falcon. Yep. Millennium Falcon, the best character in Star Wars. <laughs> <laughs> so the funny thing about the Millennium Falcon, is it like a one of a kind ship? Because like every other. It's a like Corellian YT, what, 9,000? 1,000. So are there others that look just like it? They're similar in the universe. Ships, I would yeah. assume so. They look similar. Like, so this one's like heavily modified, quote unquote. Okay. Yeah. But like the same, the the layout of it, it would be something that there would be other ones. YT-1000, I think it is. You're right, Jeremy. Because yep. like every other ship on here, with the exception of the Death Star, there are thousands or at least hundreds, right? Like yep. Star yeah. Destroyers are probably like aircraft carriers where it's like, yep. you know, there's a bunch around. X-Wings and TIE Fighters, there are like thousands. Gajillions, yeah. But like the Millennium Falcon... I've always gotten the impression that it was just kind of like, there's just like one of them. I kind of feel like it is like a classic car in a way. Like it was popular at one point and then his is just held together with, you know, glue and duct tape. Right. And well, so it's gum. still around. You know? <laughs> well, and it's, it's supposed to be like a freight ship or something too. So it's being used outside of a purpose that it would normally be used for. So it's like really souped up and has all the hidden compartments and everything. It's like if you take like a Dodge minivan and just slammed a huge engine in it. Right. So... I, I read a funny uh, thing today, just today. It said, um, imagine when Vader saw Han Solo for the first time. Not only did, you know, who is this guy wearing a vest here? He brought, <laughs> he brought his son, his old protocol droid that he made. Uh, Obi-Wan. His, his, his old most, astromech. His old astromech. And then at the end of the movie... You know, sneaks up on him and shoots him out of the Death Star, bumps him out of the Death Star with a souped up 18 wheeler. Right. Basically, <laughs> Vader's like, who the hell is this who guy? Who is this guy? And well, the funny thing was, like, it says, but Vader's thinking, who in Mustafar is this? Yeah. <laughs> in the name what of What is Mustafar, this guy doing in my guy? movie? <laughs> and it just, it was really, really fun. Um, uh, Cam says, is the YT1300? It's 1300. Got is it. the model of the ship. Of the uh, Falcon. Of the Millennium Falcon. Just like the like Slave 1 is, is the model's a fire spray. Yep. Is what it's called. Yeah. Like a fire spray 31 13. or something. 13. 13. Sounds about right. Oh, Ryan has decided to shut the lights down. Thanks Man. for the cheers, Thanks, Ryan. Ryan. Um, so things that I think could have made the list. Jedi Starfighter didn't make it. Granted, that's one of those fancy mm -hmm. episode one, mm -hmm. two, and three ships. Along with the Naboo Starfighter. Naboo yeah, Starfighter, Naboo Starfighter, I think, easily could have made it on there. Yeah. 
Um, I'm trying to think. Like, General Grievous' ship oh, is pretty cool. Yeah. They left off, guys. They left off one of the most important ships. The Friendship. The Snow Speeder. Oh, yeah. yeah. That, oh, they, yeah. that they took the at <laughs> yeah. down with. Snow Speeder is pretty sick. Yeah, those were cool, those actually. Those were dope. Yeah. With a dual, you know, tar- harpoon gun. Yeah, I got. They I always left get the impression out. from those that they can't get very high. Like yeah. those are definitely not leaving the planet. No. Or even like getting to like the cruising altitude that like no. you know an Earth plane right. would. Yeah, you know, they're pretty low. Yeah. And they left out the cloud car. Oh, you're. Oh, yeah, the two seat <laughs> <laughs> the cloud city. Yeah. Just those things are ridiculous. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. I can't think of anything right off the top of my head that's like. Super recognizable. I, I mean, like the uh, why can't I think of it? Mando's first ship. Oh, the Razor Crest. Razor Crest is yeah. pretty, sweet. pretty iconic. Ship. Brad just said the Sith infiltrator. Oh yeah, yep. So like, there's a bunch of stuff that could get knocked oh, you off. Guys, here. we see Darth Maul's ship in the first. And one. that's oh, Sith that's true. He's got a cool ship. That's a really cool ship. Yeah. Yeah. Grievous so. has a cool ship. The Malevolence. Yeah, that's what I was mm-hmm. saying. Like Grievous is yeah. So like. I feel, oh my gosh. So the, oh, oh, sorry about the Garfield redeem, Ryan. You got a Sunday one. <laughs> oh, it cuts it off. That's so funny. The, um, <laughs> I really janked that together. So if it hits a Sunday one, that's what it looks like. <laughs> <laughs> well, that was a fun list. It was a good to like reminisce through all the old, all the ships are so iconic. Keith, you were worried about knowing them all. And I think you knew every one, didn't you? Well, when they were explained to me in the, medical the, figured, in the context yeah. of the story, I was like, oh yeah, I kind of remember that and can maybe picture it in my head. Yeah. <laughs> um, but, you know, like, before before the show started, we were, like, top 15 ships, and I'm like, well, there's TIE Fighters and X-Wings, yep. and, like, what else is there? Yep. I didn't realize that there was, like, different varieties of all these things. Mm-hmm. So, mm-hmm. There you uh, go. You always learn something new on Rise of the Podcast. Yep. Yes, you do. So, last week, my co- one of my coworkers, he told me, he goes, you know what? How'd you guys do it? How'd you get known for, like, liking Star Wars so much? And I, and I said, it just kind of happened. And <laughs> Kit- Kara, sometimes she gets annoyed because she's like, people can buy me non-Star Wars related stuff too, but it's very the easy route to go yeah. to, to get, get a Star Wars, Star Wars stuff. things. Anyways, he said that his goal is to be known for uh, like Legend of Zelda Link stuff. He would he, he wants to be mm. known for that because that's his favorite video game series of all time. And he saw somebody um, uh, on Reddit cosplay as the guy who cranks the music box in the <laughs> Ocarina of Time, the, you know, do-do-do, do-do-do, do-do-do-do-do-do-do, that guy. He's cranking the music box. Anyways. Who um, is that? Who? That was Dave. Oh, oh, oh Dave. Yeah, no, Dave. Yeah, Dave wants me to know his religion is Zelda. Absolutely. Dave right. from work. Dave yes. from work wants Dave me to know with the thirty guys. children. So if you <laughs> see Dave and you want to buy him a present, get him, you know, a master sword or a Hyrulean shield or a get him a Majora's know. Mask toaster. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> there you go. Kara gave up the coolest toaster in the universe because she's lame. Is the bald filter on right now? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, but anyway, why so does it only stick to you though? It really likes me. For some reason. Oh, oh my god! <laughs> oh my god! This it is took amazing. Your yeah. It's amazing. <laughs> oh my god! It just, that's, that's wild. I want like an even that's closer the, close up of, bre- yeah, of you right now. Like yeah, holy like, cow, Keith! Yeah, so come in close. Come in tighter on me. Like I, I can't. To? This is oh, okay. the most oh my god. gosh! This is crazy. <laughs> that is hilarious. Oh. <laughs> Well, the best part is sometimes Kara's hair behind her head is there. Yeah, oh, see. it can't mask it all yeah. out. And so, yeah, it leaves some of it. Yeah. You look extremely creepy. You look like a cone head with a like top a, knot. Yeah, like a genie. <laughs> or a genie. Super Ooh. fun. Anyway, so, Chris, you had streamed it uh, already a couple weeks ago now. Shredder's Revenge came out. We've been yep. just hitting on yeah. Ninja Turtles. It wouldn't be a thing if we didn't talk about Ninja Turtles. So, Keith, being a humongous 80s fan, right, you... How do you feel about the Ninja Turtles? I love I love it that Ninja Turtles are back. You know, Eastman and Laird, they're famous for always saying that Ninja Turtles come in waves, and it's awesome that we're, like, coming up to, again to the top of another, another wave. I hope we get more Turtles stuff. I know Seth Rogen has been talking about doing a Ninja Turtles movie for oh, about 10 cool. years now. So what he was going to do um, is pull the original Jim Henson suits out of storage yes. and then just augment them with a little bit of CG, which I think is brilliant because the suits are damn near perfect as it is. Mm-hmm. Um, we don't need full CG turtles when we, we have animatronics that are that awesome. Well, so I, let's use them. We just rewatched them, like I said, and it's surprising the amount of different things that they can pull off. Oh, my God. Uh, in those things. Yeah. And they knew what they were working with, too, I think, you know, because that first movie is lit so dark and yeah. they're always in the shadows. So it's like 
you know, they they helped the suits with the lighting too yes. to sell them. Yeah, it's kind of like how they did the dinosaurs in the first Jurassic Park. Yeah, That's yeah, make like, it rain. You know, backlit in the dark. Yeah. That's my biggest beef going. is it's no, with the third one of the live action ones is just it's honestly too much light. Mm. There's something about the scene and world building where it's dark and it reminds me of like Gotham City in a way. Uh, it just was really well done. It's so moody and dark and f- really fun. Yeah. The 1990 Ninja Turtles is amongst my favorite movies. I love that movie. That was like my go to I'm homesick movie. Yeah. Uh, and the first one's got uh, Casey Jones. Yep. yep. Casey Jones in it, who's super funny. Oh, <laughs> Raphael and him in the park. You got to know what a crumpet is to like cricket. <laughs> <laughs> there's some really I mean that movie is just full of brilliant stuff there's that like really long one take where Raphael and Splinter are like talking in candlelight and mm-hmm. it's just like the camera's just like floating around between them and Splinter's like and do not forget about me and Raphael starts crying and I'm like yep oh that scene gets me every time it's super it's good so good for but, someone who'd never seen Kara had seen it for the first time out of the blue no nostalgia yeah, yeah. built no, in it was, and it was it was it was pretty good. You it was it, pretty, what's your letter grade? It was grade? pretty good. A letter grade? I'd give it a B plus. See, that's yeah. good. Okay, Rated that's T good. for totally awesome. <laughs> yep. Do you guys know who um, the, there's this teenager who's like hanging out in the skate park? He's like, you want regular or menthol? Do you yeah. know who that is? No. It is Sam Rockwell. Who has really? Who a million movies like Moon and... Um, Choke and just like tons of great movies. No kidding. Okay. Yeah, that's so you speak about moments because I haven't seen the movie in the last couple of years, but there's like moments that stick out. So that's a moment that sticks out for me. For some reason, another moment like that completely. I don't think anybody else would even remember this. So Raphael's walking by himself. He's like, I'm going to go see a movie or whatever. And they're playing Critters. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I just remember the marquee with Critters on there. And it's like, that's, that's like what roots that to like 1989 is when they shot this movie. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> yep. Spe- Great speaking moment. of Critters, I saw a thing where, you know, it, it's just like somebody that works in the movie Gremlins complained that Grogu was Baby Yoda was copied off of Gremlins. And they're like, that absolutely came out four years after Star Wars. So it's like <laughs> Yoda's based off of himself. Like Baby Yoda's based off of himself. But I thought that was right. funny. Yeah, the guy Gremlin. He, he was like trying to claim that yeah, Baby Yoda was copied off of Gremlins. And it was like, well, that's an interesting way to. Frame I mean, it. what about all the other stuff that have been copied from Gremlins, like Furbies and yeah, oh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. I feel like yeah. Gremlins have been ripped off so many times. Why I focus on want, Baby Yoda? I am curious if like you account for inflation. Gr- Furbies probably have sold more merch than Baby Yoda. Everyone had Furbies were the t- the Beanie Babies yeah. of their era. Well, I mean Beanie Babies and Furbies were kind of the same era. Oh, Beanie Babies are way before Furby. Were they? Were they? I think the- they were. Yeah, I remember. I want to say Beanie Babies were around ninety five to ninety eight, and Furbies were probably around two thousand. It's the same era, generally. Okay. Like, were Beanie Babies popular? I might be dating yeah. myself a little bit, but I remember going to the mall, my whole family going to the mall so that my sister could get the new release Beanie Baby. I don't remember which one it was, but we were like in a line of like 50 people when oh the mall gosh. opened. It was like hardcore 1990s Beanie I Baby had time. A, like a one to three months because my mom used to own an antique store. And so she was like privy to the Beanie Babies. So we would try to go get rare ones. And so we, mm. one or two times we did that and like went to go get a Beanie Baby <laughs> that was sought after. And they're absolutely. Did you get Dr. Moose? <clears throat> you probably can't give them away. <laughs> you know what's funny? The only Beanie Babies, as far as I know, that still hold their value are the ones that have defects yeah. and were part of like limited runs. So it's like there's like a typo on the tag oh, and they yeah, printed yeah. a thousand of them and then realized and fixed it yeah. and mm-hmm. then relaunched it. Those thousand are worth like. Tons. Misprint Legos are very similar. Yeah. Uh, or Lego. Pardon so, me. So, for anyone who's curious, Beanie Babies debuted in 1993, and their height of their heyday was 1995 to 1997. Okay. Nice. And Furbies came out in 1999. Oh, all right. I was so off close, by like a year or two on both of those. So, Furbies have sold 40 million units. Holy wow. Geez. My goodness. So, how much did a Furby cost? Did it cost? 20 bucks? No idea. How much I never had one. Yeah, I don't think we ever had one in my house either. Boy, make me feel like the kid over. I might have okay, so retail price nineteen ninety. I guess it was it was nineteen ninety eight. Apparently, they came out. 
$35 retail, but were marked up to over $100 instantly once they were worried about running out of them. Man, wow. and Dang. you know, 35 bucks, that's that was also lot. like 20 years ago. Yeah, yeah like, that's like 80 bucks, yeah. 2022 $20, dollars. Yeah. If Chip came and asked me for a stupid thing like that and it was 80 bucks, I'd be like, nah, dog. <laughs> Right. Nah. You would cave immediately. Did, nah. Tickle me Elmo come out. Oh, that uh, that was madness that year. I'm gonna it say was that was ninety five. It was crazy. I'm gonna guess ninety five. Nineteen ninety six. Dang. Oh, okay. So that was like the the filler between Beanie Babies and the Furby was Tickle Me Elmo. Right. <laughs> so yeah. So Beanie Babies sold out, and then yeah, it was replaced by Tickle Me Elmo, so, and then Tickle has there Furby. been like a big the have to have it toy really since the two thousands? Well, I I mean it's not a toy exactly, but this craze these crazes kind of remind me of Pokemon Go, where that wasn't like a physical thing that you buy, but it That's was true. a thing that mm-hmm. everyone was doing for a very short period mm-hmm. of time. I still do it. I play at work that watch that I wear is an automatic catching thing for Pokemon Go. Oh, so what's even the fun? What? Oh, so that, that's so like I can save up to at the end of the day. Oh, I caught a bunch. Of well, no, it's it's so that I can make my good Pokemon strong. I'm just catching trash and throwing it away right now to oh, make my strong okay. dude stronger. Gotcha. Chris likes to kick button raids and have strong mons. Yeah, gotcha. So, oh, we have a wheel spin. Cam from has redeemed Cam. the spin Ooh. of the wheel. We've got some fun stuff on here. Oh, <laughs> is that why those are there? <laughs> it looks painful down there. Oh my goodness, we don't even have anybody to redeem Oh, I'll this. do it. Nerf darts. You got a loaded no. gun, Chris? Oh yeah. Dave is very responsible. I can't promise oh, you're man. not going to get heat, hit teeth. Uh, oh. ah. Those are some horrible darts. <laughs> Oh, dang. oh, he got me. Ah. All right, I think you got everybody, Chris. You Woo. hit me in the dome. Oh, <laughs> man. <laughs> Woo. Oh. You never. That was intense. You never Where's expected Ryan? that. It's what it, Ryan has got responsibilities. He's a parent now. And, oh, Ryan's think, laying on the couch charging his phone. That thing is like battery powered insanity. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. We don't mess is. around. The viewers at home could not see that, but he was like 20 <laughs> feet away on some stairs. Last just week launching we had <laughs> uh, Matt and Lance down here. Yep, I know. And they're like, man, it's like a sniper perched up there. I don't know why I'm still doing turtles, but. Although oh, Lance man. did a really good Matt impre- or like impersonation, like a really of, good one. Of, yeah. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Of Matt. It was really, really good. Very good. good. I was impressed. I was like, La- God, dang Lance it. is also kind of just in permanent Michelangelo impersonation. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I hope he's watching this now and sees this it was really it, so so you know, so the turtles being cyclical so yeah there's um i mean turtle there's funko pop still they're coming out for ninja turtles yeah. there's still a lot of ninja, ninja turtle merch which and is really fun the dream team has gotten back together eastman and laird so i don't know if you guys are familiar with the behind the scenes uh ninja turtle stuff but eastman and laird had a big parting of ways oh really much publicized kind of split and uh, then in The Toys That Made Us, which is a Netflix oh, series about toys. Excellent. Show. Very, very, very good. Did, did you guys watch the Turtles one? They kind of secretly got them together. Uh-huh. And they're like, oh, hey, man, it's been a while. And they started, like, sketching and stuff. And, like, it was like, oh, they're friends again. And then they put out a graphic novel that's, like, very post-apocalyptic. All the turtles are dead. And Michelangelo is the last one. And he's a Ronin. Oh, no way. Shredder's taken over the world. And, what? yeah, it looks very, like, Old Man Logan. I haven't cool. read it yet. But it's by Eastman and Laird together again. They got the Fine. band That's back cool. together. Oh, no That's way. awesome. It's so cool. It's like, not only is Turtles a great story, but Eastman and Laird, it's a very interesting story. We, we, uh, we have watched quite a few of the, the toys that made it. I don't know if we watched the Turtles I think one. we watched Turtles one. No. I highly recommend it. I've, the whole series, I, okay. I just love it. Because they did the, the movies that made, are really, yep. and those are all really good too. They yep. are. Uh, we really enjoyed. We talked about uh, the Home Alone one was fantastic. Yes, you know, and mm-hmm. then uh, Back to the Future was really good too. Yeah, in Home Alone, yeah, you you learn that they built the McAllisters' house in Inside a of swimming gym. pool. Oh, in a pool. Oh, in a gym. It was a gym. Yeah, it was a gym in old abandoned school. Yeah, yep. yeah. Yep. So and then cool. it switched studios, like in the middle of the shoot or whatever. And they walked yes. through and they're like, you're fired, you're fired, you're fired. Yep. You're hired, you're hired, you're hired. Because, you know, it was from a new yeah. studio. Yeah, a new studio. And then um, Back to the Future, it was just like he was looking through his yearbook. And he was like, I wonder what it would have been like to go to school with my dad. 
That's really like the inspiration for. Uh, oh yeah, he saw that his dad yeah. is class president. And he thought about his class president and how much he hated him, and he's like, "Would I have been friends with my dad?" Right, yeah. <laughs> I I know probably everything about Back to the Future. Wait, is that Robert Zemeckis? Did he yeah. write, he wrote the script? Yeah, or? him and Bob Gale. Oh yeah, Bob. What else did Bob Gale write? Romancing the Stone. I feel which. Like- You've recommended that, and we have not watched yet. You've recommended it on this show, actually, and I. Still I love Romance it. in the Stone. You guys are just missing out. Danny yeah. DeVito's in it, and is hilarious. That's all you need to know. I love Danny, Danny DeVito, DeVito is also in Mars Attacks for like five minutes. He's in it a little longer than that. And Tom uh, Jones. D- Danny DeVito is amazing. He's in everything, <clears throat> like everything. He was in Big Fish. You know what we need to do? we need yeah. to do to wow. the top ten Danny DeVito movies. Ooh, There's yeah. a lot of them. He Hercules, was in the, he Twins, was in the Tilda, War of the Roses. Was he the dad of Matilda? I have not seen that. He was. He, was, he is the dad of Matilda. Okay. Yeah. Yep. He directed, directed that movie too. Really? He's a great director. Matilda, War of the Roses. Uh, I should be able to name more, but I can't. You want me to pull so up his IMDb? So trunchable. She was. I just found out she was a. Uh, she was in another movie I was watching. And I was like, what? No That's way. Trunchable? Did you recognize her? Or? I didn't. I. I, I I, I feel don't like she remember. Must be, she must be pretty heavily made up in She in, had um, to have been. Matilda. Let I me love see. Matilda is such a cool movie. It is such a good movie. Of course Batman Returns. Yeah, he yes, was a penguin, of course. wasn't he? What about what about um directorial films for him? All right. So <clears throat> uh just so Oh, uh, Duplex with Ben Stiller. He directed Duplex. That's a great movie. Never seen that. It's so it's throw Mama weird. from the Train, The War of the Roses, Hoffa, Matilda, Death to Smoochie, which is a pretty good movie. Death to Smoochie, Robin Williams, awesome. right? and then Duplex, and then a bunch of shorts. Yeah, he's. I mean, I feel like as a director, he has a pretty interesting kind of voice. It's like he he does a lot of like canted camera angles, like looking up with like a wide angle lens. That was a lot of Matilda. Like Matilda was kind of like from her point of view of being little or whatever yeah. like compared to everybody else. Everything's got kind of like a, it's almost like a Terry oh. Gilliam type aesthetic. It's really cool. Do you know who she is? Uh, this is uh, it's Aunt Marge from Harry Potter. Really? Really? That's Trunchbull. That's Trunchbull. No I remember seeing that, way. looking it up. I was like, what? Oh, I was man. Like, yeah, Aunt Marge, the one that gets blown up like a balloon. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's really cool. That's trunchable. Oh, Keith is bald. We're again. bald again. <laughs> <laughs> I look like I, uh, just... I look like Uncle Fester. You <laughs> 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 knew you were secretly Christopher Lloyd. Yes. Oh my gosh. <laughs> what what other Christopher? Oh, we were just talking about Angel in the Outfield the other day. Yep. When I wait, we had you watch the most crazy trailer in the universe. Yeah. Yeah. The nineteen fifty was it fifties? Yeah, nineteen fifty one. Angels in the Outfield. Who knew that Angels in the Outfield was a remake? I, didn't I, know, I had. I no did idea. not. Wait, know that. Angels in the Outfield from the nineties is. Yeah. A remake? What? Yeah. Uh, the original does not look good. It does not. <clears throat> Even I though did it was not the, know uh, that was a remake. Nope. Uh, Angels in the Outfield 51 was Harry Truman's favorite movie. What? <laughs> that was a trivia on that. Th- I fell down such a rabbit hole on that movie. Um, I've been to the... No. I'm thinking of um, Field Dreams. Got Sorry. Centered. The Stream Protocol droid did. <laughs> no way. What was his score? 93.84. You think it could be higher than that? He looks dang near centered. Although I am, I suppose I'm assuming 100 is the top, but it could be something else, right? Do we want to do a surprise round of the IMDb game since we have Danny DeVito up? Sure. Sure. Let's do it. Ladies and gentlemen, it's time for the IMDb game. Woo! Woo! For those of you who do not know, the IMDb game is played thus. The person, like, so normally somebody would redeem this, but we would select an actor and actress and then try to determine whether or not that actor or actress has appeared in more films or fewer films than screen legend Sean Connery. Oh, man, yeah. So, as we are talking about Danny DeVito, we have selected Danny DeVito. Do you guys believe that he has appeared in more films? This is according to IMDb, of course. He has appeared in more films or fewer films than Sean Connery. More. I'm going to go with more. I'll say less. All right, so we have more, more, and less. We'll give Chad a second to decide whether or not they think that they's, he has appeared in more or fewer films. Ryan says more. Cam says more. Brad, oh, what do you Brad's worth, what do you say? He's probably not paying attention. He's too busy, like, redoing his windows or something. Right? 
I'm is alone Brad'sworth here. He, Brad'sworth is in here. Danny DeVito's been in a lot of stuff. Yeah, but so is Sean Connery. Oh, it's Brad'sworth just, I, says less. I think that in this day and age, we're more familiar with Danny DeVito's films than we are Sean Connery's films. Sean Connery's films are from like another Forever age. Ago. That's true. Uh, though, that's the era of movies that I watched, was allowed to watch though, so. Oh, yeah. You weren't allowed to watch like new movies? Mm, in the you watch Time Depend, Bandits? Depends on what the new movie was, oh, okay. which is why we have Kara does a movie review so I can catch up on all the movies I couldn't <laughs> watch as a kid. <laughs> all right. So we have the results in. Most people are picking more. Brad has picked less, and you have picked less. Yes. He has appeared in more films than Sean Connery. Whoa. And now, I know we By a decent know. margin. What What is the number? Well, so the, to oh. maintain the integrity of the game, you're not, you're not supposed to know how many films Sean Connery has appeared oh, in. Oh, okay. Gotcha. So I also don't say how many the other person has, so just in case you can't narrow it down. Right, right, right. So I hear it enough. That's what? just for the, like, if you want to know, you can look it up, but it's like for the integrity of the game. And I remember to turn the music off this time. Okay, so now, oh, here's a question. Now, for IMDb's purposes, is every episode of Always Sunny and Taxi, do each one of those count mm -hmm. as The, the a series film? itself counts as one. Okay, yeah. I wasn't sure if, you know, because 100 <laughs> episodes of Taxi, I don't, ta yeah. maybe Taxi didn't go for 100 episodes, but so, you know, and it, like, so I, again, that's why I, I blame IMDb if for anybody who feels like the numbers are misrepresented. Sometimes they count appearance as self on talk shows, sometimes they don't. Uh, so okay. it can be variable, but that's why I say it's the IMDb game. We're using IMDb's numbers. That's right. how it goes. So, Speaking of games, Chris. Oh, yes. Do you, I think we should try this. It's brand new. I spent several days working on this. <laughs> you can tell. I am so excited to see this. Drum roll. Ba -da 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 -da. Chris, you have made Jeopardy! Do, do, do. I, what's the, hold on. What's the, the, what's the main theme song? I can't remember how it goes. Do, 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 that's the, oh, that's the, during the question thing. They play oh. a different song during the... Well, this it's, it's, is Jeopardy! It, it, it's kind of like the more upbeat version of uh, oh, okay. the quiz. The, t the, the yeah. 30 second clock. We don't have that. And I also don't have a final Jeopardy question. So whoever wins at the end of the double do Jeopardy... double Jeopardy? We do, yeah. Okay, that's what right, I was doing. Right, nice. You guys are out there having fun. I was in here sweating. <laughs> <running out. laughs> double Jeopardy there questions. There are like double Jeopardy questions. Where pew, 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 pew. pew. In there? Well, yeah, yeah, the the the, yes. like, the daily doubles and stuff. Yeah, all that. That's what I there. meant. Daily doubles. All right. All I was right. trying awesome. to show you guys earlier, but you guys are too busy talking to each other. It's like, oh yeah, and I've got these in here too. But and we're just like Ninja Turtles. Blah, blah, blah. <laughs> well, this is like pre podcast starting, so. All right, so let's go like. That. I am gonna get my butt spanked on this one. All right, so I'm gonna have to do a sound effect here. <laughs> that was so good. <laughs> okay, we, right. we need our we need our, our sounds, buzzers. our buzzers right, so now. Our categories are Star Wars, pop culture, potpourri. Okay, Keep so in mind, sure. P.O.T. is in quotation marks. Google, film history, and music. All right, so I'm going to get destroyed. Guest, so I'm going to let you pick first. Ooh, okay. Um. Whoops, I oh, had the wrong button, sorry. Away. Brownie, I'll take uh, film history for 100, please. Film history for 100. Along with Ben-Hur and Titanic, this 2003 fantasy film holds the Academy Award, the well, record for most Academy Award wins wow. with 11. I think we need a clarification of the rules, though. <laughs> the question has to be finished being read before you can chime oh, in. There we go. There. Karen, Karen's we're we're, we're play, playing post-1994 rules. Okay, okay. Can I say if, if, when when the when the card goes away, then you can chime in. Okay, Kara. What is Return of the King? That is correct. Boom! Oh man, Kara. <laughs> so there you go. Kara's got a hundred dollars. Kara, the yeah. control Just of the kidding, board sorry. is Woo. yours. Okay. Uh, let's do. Let's just continue with film history for 200. Film history 200. So after the card goes away, I can beep yep. if I need to. Okay. In 74 days, this film became the first to gross over $1 billion worldwide. I believe that's Jeremy. What is Titanic? That is correct. Oh, Dang. Man. Okay. All right. Very nice. Yeah, I'm sleeping over here, you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So just for clarity, so Jeremy's the seagull, I'm guessing? It's a uh, goose. goose. It's a goose. And then, Keith, your noise is? I gotta make that a little louder. The classic buzzer, and Kara is? Very good. Okay. Okay. All right, Jeremy, the board is yours. All right, we are gonna do film history for 300. Film history 300. 
Featuring prominently in the Back to the Future films, this famous film vehicle was originally going to be a refrigerator. Oh, that was Keith. All right, Keith. The DeLorean. That is correct. The Woo! DeLorean. You didn't phrase it right. I didn't. Oh. Well, so <laughs> the, the, oh, my God. You're right. What is the DeLorean? <laughs> <laughs> they, round one, they usually forgive. Okay. Whew, you're That's geez. your one warning. My heart stopped for a second there. <laughs> that is correct. Yeah, so as everyone knows, Jeopardy must be answered in the form of a question. Right. So that's your that's your own freebie. Oh, man. My right, mulligan. Keith, the board is yours. Uh, film history for 400. For 400. Used to distinguish Kansas from the titular locale, this 1939 classic was the first to be filmed in Technicolor. Oh, I was definitely last. So I care. What is the Wizard of Oz? Correct. The Wizard of Oz. So that's 400, one, two, three, four. All right, Kara. Uh, Let's finish it off. Film history 500. Film history 500. This 1973 film, penned by Michael Crichton, was the first feature film to use CGI. Keith? Oh, I know this is wrong. What is Lawnmower Man? That is incorrect. <sighs> Jeremy? What is Westworld? That is correct. Yes! Oh, nice. What? Yes! What? All right. How did, how did you know that, Jeremy? Because when I watched and I looked to look at the TV show, they talked about the movie, and then I like read about the movie. So about four or five years ago, whenever HBO came out with Westworld is when I learned that that was a... Nice. The answer to that question. I am. I didn't think anyone's going to get that. I'm genuinely impressed, Jeremy. <laughs> that is wow. All right. All right. Well done. All right. Back to the game, Jeremy. The control of the board is yours. Google for one hundred. Google for one hundred. So that's what for. Google's catchphrase or an option when searching, which automatically launches the first result. Keith. Keith. What is Google? Incorrect. Jeremy? What is I'm feeling lucky? That is correct. Oh, oh, yeah. Oh, man, guys, I got a hole to crawl out of here. <laughs> this is bad. Yo, <laughs> I, I don't want to say that I'm surprised at what the scores are right now, but I'm genuinely surprised. <laughs> Keith, thank you for being here and playing with us. It's yeah. the first time we've ever done this. So this, oh. is a, this is like 30 man hours over the last four days for me. Jeez. Totally worth it. All right, I'm going to take what is Google for 200 or Google, Google category for, for 200. Google This rival search engine had an opportunity to buy Google for $2 million in 1997. I think that was Kara. What is Bing? Incorrect. Oh. What is uh, AOL? Incorrect. <gasps> what is Yahoo? Correct. Oh, oh. no! That. <laughs> uh, Jeremy, the board is yours. All right, Google for 300. Google 300. Jeremy is smashing us. This search engine's namesake, a Google, contains this many zeros. Jeremy? Uh, oh, uh, I didn't mean to buzz in. <laughs> Can I not buzz in? All right, just give me a number. Uh, 10 zeros. <laughs> Incorrect. Anybody else want to chime in? <laughs> nope. <laughs> a Google has 100 zeros. Whoa! 100. Jeremy, the board is still yours. All right. Google for 400. Google for 400. This culinary Muppet is also a language preference in Google search. Jeremy? Uh, what is the chef? Could you be more specific? From Muppets. <laughs> Kara? What is a Swedish chef? Swedish chef is correct. No! Oh, man. <laughs> Boom! That was real Jeopardy right going on right there. What, how, how far did Jeremy go down in the past two questions? So Kara's winning! Oh, man. We are currently, Jeremy is at 300 points. Keith, unfortunately, <laughs> owes the studio 500 points. It's okay. <laughs> and Kara is at 700. Uh, so we're going to take a short break and have our uh, contestants talk about themselves for a little bit. Keith, I hear you're from the local area and are a filmmaker. <laughs> yeah, that is true, Alex. So uh, what type of projects are you working on right now? Well, right now I'm working on a uh, documentary about local Ghostbusters cosplayers who raise money for Ronald McDonald House charities. Oh, very interesting. We'll have to get back to that after the show. Thanks, <laughs> <laughs> All right. Um, I forget who has control of the board. Kara. Kara, the board is yours. Let's finish off Google for 500. Google for 500. 
Joss Whedon's supernatural teen drama was home to the first televised use of the phrase Google it. What is Buffy the Vampire Slayer? That is correct. Nice. Woo! Nice. Out well done. All right, Keith, the board is yours. Pick a new category. Let's do pop culture for 100. Pop culture 100. Netflix features this 2020 documentary series starring Joe Exotic and Carol Baskin. I Jeremy, couldn't think of what the is the Tiger King? Correct. I kept thinking Lion King. I was like, yes. Nope. <laughs> All right, Jeremy. What is pop or the pop culture for 200? Pop culture for 200. I did not anticipate Trop showing up on this. <laughs> pop culture for 200. This actor turned down $110 million from NBC to film a 10th season of his eponymous sitcom. Who is Jerry Seinfeld? That is correct. Wow. wow. Impressive. Woo. Uh, oh. Pop culture for 300, please. Pop culture three. Baywatch bombshell Pamela Anderson was once married to this 80s rocker. I believe that was Kara. Who is Kid Rock? Incorrect. What? Who is Tommy Lee? That is That's correct. That's right. They have a movie about that. Yeah. She is HBO. married to Kid Rock right now, isn't she? I don't know. I don't know who she's married to currently. I think she's... Well, I... 10 years ago. <laughs> <laughs> right now, 10 years ago. <laughs> Pop culture for 400. Pop culture for four. <clears throat> this superstar infamously had a wardrobe malfunction during the halftime show of Super Bowl 38. Oh, oh. That was Kara. <laughs> Who was Janet Jackson? <laughs> Janet Jackson's correct. <laughs> Whoops. Hold on one second. I got to make a score correction here. Do you I, get in trouble for beeping in too early? You well, said. you beeped in after I turned it off too. So it's like you can oh. click and then they just turn it on when the when he's done yeah. reading the oh, question. Okay. So like people will sit there you and mash him, the like, clickers. Oh, there. gotcha, gotcha, okay. Yeah. I hear she got pulled over the other day. Uh, we'll Who? check in on Dan scores Jackson. real quick, yeah. so. Yeah, she had a headlight out. <laughs> Keith went on a. <laughs> <laughs> that is so bad. That's a good one. <laughs> Keith went on a good run and he is now positive. He's in second place with 500. Jeremy in third with four and Kara the leader with 800. Kara, control of the board is yours. Uh, let's finish off pop culture. Pop culture for 500. This actor, star of Beverly Hills Ninja, was the first choice to voice Shrek prior to Mike Myers. Oh. Jeremy? Chris Farley? Chris Farley is correct. Ooh. Oh, good one. All right, let's do, uh, let's, let's, I'm going to just go there because I want to, yeah, let's Star Wars for 100. Star Wars 100. Princess Leia uttered the famous line, aren't you a little short for a blank? <laughs> uh, so Keith was the first one after the thing dropped. Aren't you, uh, what is a stormtrooper? Correct, stormtrooper. Nice recovery. <laughs> All right, Keith, the board is yours. Star Wars for two. Star Wars for two. In 2001 British census, almost 400,000 people listed their faith as this order introduced in Star Wars. <sighs> That's so close. I think I'm going to go Keith. What is the Jedi order? Correct. Star Wars for three. <laughs> Star Wars for three. The top grossing film ever with a budget under $1 million gave George Lucas the opportunity to make Star Wars. Keith? What is American Graffiti? American Graffiti is correct. Uh, Star Wars for 400. Star Wars for four. This spaceship was originally modeled after a hamburger with an olive next to it. <laughs> Kara? What's the Millennium Falcon? Correct. This poor goose over here is getting honking a little too slow. See, the, yeah, the, the hog is slightly delayed. It is. Oh, man. It is. Carrie, yeah. you're up. Oh, 500. Star Wars 500. This star of Smokey and the Bandit and The Longest Yard was originally cast as Han Solo, but dropped out. Jeremy. Who is Burt Reynolds? Oh, correct. Really? Yes. Burt Reynolds is going to be Han? Yes. All Woo! right, now that we've cleared that, that category, let's check in oh, on the I was all nervous. Quick. You guys are just going to be smashing in. That's why I was excitedly <laughs> honking over here. <laughs> <laughs> excitedly honking. I really thought you guys were going to get that one. There's a, um, Han Solo read him his lines. Yeah, he was Burt doing Reynolds. the screen test with him. Oh, and George man. Lucas is like, we got to go with this guy. <laughs> That's awesome. So, cool. There's a tape of it out there, yeah. I All right, so after finishing three categories, Jeremy is now in the lead with 1,400. Keith and Kara tied for second at 12. Ooh. Jeremy, control of the board is... Oh, sorry, after claiming four categories. The control of the board is yours. All right, let's do pot potpourri for 100. All right, for, whoops, I almost hit the wrong one. Oh, that's, sorry, that's wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> Surname of the boy who lived in a cupboard under the stairs. 
Kara? Who is Potter? Correct. Uh, pot Puri for 200. Boil them, mash them, stick them in a stew. Uh, Keith was the first one after the card went down. <sighs> what is a potato? Correct. Pot Puri for three. Oh, oh, it was the daily double. Do, 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 do. How much would you like to wager, Keith? Uh, uh, 200. For 200, this type of energy is stored in an object based on its position, stress, or electrical charge. Remember the category. Yes. This type of energy is stored in an object based oh. on its position, What is stress, potential energy? That is correct. Way to go. Now, Ooh, on a daily double, a is Keith the only one that can guys. answer those? Correct, yeah. Got it, got it. I was, getting, I was getting nervous there, guys. I was like seventh grade science. It's, it's, I, I turned the difficulty up a little bit on the daily doubles. Oof. All right. Um, uh, whoops, sorry. Let me clear that. Potpourri or potpourri for 400. For 400. Has great power or effect, such as poison or alcohol. What Jeremy. is potency? Correct. All right. Potpourri <clears throat> for 500. Safe to drink. What is potable? That is or correct. Potable or but rough. I think you were a little bit early, but I'll give it to you anyway. Oh, sorry. Wow, guys, this is this is I this is a fun game here. Yeah, I love this. This is really like feels evenly matched. Look at those scores. <laughs> <laughs> I want to be here every Saturday. <laughs> this is so cool. This is great. All right, we are one category left. What's the dollar amount you'd like, Jeremy? Or sorry, uh, Kara. Kara had the most recent answer. Yep. Oh, I get. It. Let's just start at the top. Do one hundred. For one hundred. Eminem's film Eight Mile is named after a road in this city. Keith. What is Detroit? Correct. Hmm. Music for 500. Oh, hot dang, oh. hot dang. Weird Al Yankovic thought this artist gave permission to parody the song Gangster's Paradise. Uh, I'm going to give that one to Jeremy. Uh, who is Coolio? Correct. I just read about that, as a matter of fact. And uh, they made up years later on. And it, Weird Al had the funniest response. Sorry, I'm wasting everybody's Jeopardy time. Weird Al, they met at a convention in like 2004. They like shook hands and they interviewed Weird Al afterwards. And he said, yeah, I can finally stop wearing my bulletproof vest to the mall. <laughs> <laughs> I was like, I love Weird Al's humor. He's so funny. Sorry, sorry. That was just, yeah, he's great. Well, so. Anecdotes are completely allowed here. Yeah, Trebek never put up with that. <laughs> <laughs> I'm no Alex Trebek. <laughs> Suck it, Trebek. <laughs> Uh, music for 400. For 400. Prior to playing the Joker, Jared Leto was frontman for this emo band. Kara. Oh, I know this is wrong. Who is Suicide Squad? Incorrect. Okay. Uh, Keith. What is 30 Seconds to Mars? That is correct. Oh. Band. Not the, I think you were thinking movie. Yeah, I was thinking. Huh? You were thinking the movie? Oh, yeah, no. Oh, who sings that? No, it's not. Suicide Squad's the movie. What's the song that, um, never mind. Is that that Mad World song or whatever? I don't know. Maybe. I right. can't. Okay. So, uh, Keith, I believe the what, board is What yours. do we have left? Two and 300. Yep. Oh, 300. This astronomer was first to see Jupiter's moons and is named in Queen's Bohemian Rhapsody. Kara. Who is Galileo? Correct. And finished off with 200. And to finish the category, Van Halen famously banned this color M&M in their rider. No takers? The correct answer is brown. Oh, sorry. <laughs> That's okay. I was going to guess and it was wrong. Right. <laughs> you saved me. That is the end of round one. So oh currently, my goodness. our scores wow, are sitting close. Kara 1,700, Keith second place with 2,100. <sighs> And Jeremy in the lead with 2,300. Now, are, do you have a uh, macro set up for the score? Or are you just, are you like doing math manually while I'm, hosting I, the show? I have, uh, I don't know if you can see it that well from there. I have buttons on the side here that let me go plus and minus 100 at a oh, time. So nice. like, if okay. it's a 400 thing, I just smash it four times. Man, Brownie's doing a lot back there. Yeah, he is. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm the judge, the host, and the scorekeeper. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And the director. <laughs> and you wrote all the questions. Yeah, I'm wearing a couple of hats right now. Yes. For those of you who don't know, off in TV land, Brownie's doing everything right now. <laughs> it's unbelievable. I was very excited for this, and I'm having a good time, and I'm hopefully you guys are having fun oh, doing yeah. this. Oh, yeah. great. That's good. All right. I still so. feel ripped off on my Galileo question because the honk delay, I think, is what got me. The honk delay. Galileo. 
Get so, Get it, Leo. Get it, Leo. so we're, we're gonna take a quick host divergence real quick so uh. Uh, Keith is well aware of how much I love game shows and like I just mm-hmm. like this is like if I could be Alex Trebek that would be the dream to come true. Um, I've been looking into how to actually make like using like an Arduino how to make actual like buzzers that buzz in and lock out the other people and like light the thing up so there'd be no oh, cool. ambiguity cool. as to who buzzed in first because I could just hit a hit a thing like I'll oh, finish <laughs> reading the question they go poop okay they can buzz in now and then whoever buzzes in can get the so That's that might cool. be the next step yeah. I really want to put my coke yeah. right there. That would be cool. <laughs> <laughs> Not gonna work. I was gonna I, say too. We played a lot of games, and um, like uh, we, one didn't even air on YouTube because Kara just did too good at it that Chris made. <laughs> yeah, it was a Lord of the Rings or, one. Earth it or Middle was, Earth? Was, you did so well that it just wasn't fun. It wasn't even. Yeah, no, she literally <laughs> just instantaneously got all of them. <laughs> and so this is the closest game I think we've ever had. Yeah, this is great. I think this is the closest game we've ever it's, had. Because we had, like, Draw Lego, and some of those were, like, questions were either really easy or some were really hard. But, you know, this is very balanced. This is anyone's game still. This oh, is. It is. You, you, you did some uh, Lego draw, draw Lego with us, didn't you? I know. I never Matt did. Matt did, I believe. Matt did, did the okay. haunted items with Keith. Ah, that's yes, right. The yes, haunted that items. Was fun. Yes. I try to keep it uh, interesting here. All right. So we are moving on to round two. Sorry. Double Jeopardy. Ooh. So our categories are Batman, Spider-Man, Superman, Iron Man, The Isle of Man, and Don't Pick Music Man because there's no questions in there. (laughs) Ran out of time. I did run out of time. I wanted to actually be able to breathe before we started. Uh, So the leader after the first round is Keith. Kara, you are in last place, so you will choose first in Double Jeopardy. Oh, I get to choose first? Yep. Um, let's do, I guess, Iron Man for 200. Iron Man for 200. Sorry, I can't do, I can't do uh, Batman for you right off the bat, Keith. That's all right. This Mandalorian co-creator directed the first film in 2008. Kara? Uh, who is John Favreau? Correct. I think I was blasted by the goose on that one. <laughs> you need to change yours. Yeah, you can change your buzzer. <sighs> yeah. I'm the goose. I'll All right. Go the goose. Uh, let's go Iron Man for 400. Iron Man. Whoops, I hit the wrong one. Sorry about that. Give me one second to fix the board here. Hopefully nobody saw that. Did not. Uh, well, actually, well, when we get to 400, just know that Isle Man has a 400 thing because I actually have to leave this scene to fix it. So okay. oh, we'll Iron Man it. 400 it is a daily double. Kara, how much would you like to <laughs> wager of your $1,900? Oh, no, I don't. Uh, let's. <clears throat> Let's do 200. 200? You guys are mild. <laughs> I, know. I don't know if I'm going to You're wagering answer. less than the question was worth. Yeah, I did that too by accident. Totally oh, I by did. Accident. Whatever, it's fine. Fine, we'll do 400 then. We'll do as much as the question is worth. Okay, 400. Robert Downey Jr. also stars as the titular oh. self trained detective in this 2009 film series. Remember, Kara's the only one who can answer this. Who one. is Sherlock Holmes? Correct. I thought you were stressed you weren't going to get that. I was like, no way. I think she's <laughs> bummed out that you could have made some serious cash. I could have made some serious cashola there. <laughs> well, it was on a 400, so I mean, I think it would have been an easier question, right? <clears throat> you never know. So, okay, we'll continue on. Iron Man for 600, please. For six, providing the power to his Iron Man suit, this technology was developed by Tony Stark in a cave. Why am I blanking on what it's called? (laughs) Doot, (laughs) doot, (laughs) doot. But I know the answer. I I do too. It's just like. The correct answer is arc react. Yes. Uh, All right, Kara, the board is still yours. uh, Iron Man 800. This actress from 1998's Shakespeare in Love portrays Pepper Potts. That was me. That's uh, yeah. It was Jeremy. Jeremy. Oh, okay, Jeremy. Who is Gwyneth Paltrow? Correct. I couldn't think of her name. All right, Iron Man for a thousand. Sorry, Keith. No, you had it. I I heard yours. You're, it's got a little like before the yeah, honk. It, it like takes a breath. Yeah. Yep. Well, I appreciate your sportsmanship, Keith. There we go. Uh, Iron Man for a thousand. Yep. Replaced by Don Cheadle in subsequent films, this actor first portrayed James Rhodes. <laughs> that was a tie. That was legitimately a tie. Keith, go I for actually, it. I actually think that that one was me. I think it was oh. Keith as well. Uh, who is Terrence Howard? Correct. I just saw a video with Terrence Howard trying to sell his own drones he created in Uganda. Interesting. And he also thinks one times one is two. Is this an Iron yeah, Man Yeah, Terrence spin-off? Howard has this whole math thing. <laughs> it's, it's insane, like, listening to it. I'm glad you brought that up, Jerry. Huh. Yeah, I, I just, I, I want to say the math thing is part of the reason he didn't come back. 
I got to look this up. That sounds, it's, it's, it sounds awesome. It's crazy. I, I don't know how much the math thing actually played into it, but the thing, so um, Robert Downey Jr. only got paid like a million dollars to be in the first Iron Man film. Oh, that's And funny. he was, well, because he was on the rebounding his career, right? Yeah, only a million. Um, and Terrence Howard was upset that he was going to get paid less for the second film and Robert Downey Jr. was going to get paid way more. Oh. And so like there was this whole beef and Don Cheadle's like, hold on for nothing. <laughs> <laughs> He's like, he knew what was coming, basically. So right. he's like, I'm going to get in. Even if you only make $800,000 for 20 Marvel movies, that's still a paycheck. So. Right. Yeah, that's true. I'd take an $800,000 check. <laughs> Let's do. I don't even need to look at the board. Batman for a thousand. Batman. Oh, oh three rigs 64. Thank you for following. Look at that. Jeopardy oh, hey, bringing thanks. people together. Cool. Okay, so for 1,000 Batman. The Grayson family were aerial performers prior to the sabotage of this tool of the trade. <gasps> he beat me. Yeah, Jeremy. What is the tightrope? Incorrect. What Keith? is the trapeze? Correct. Oh, I should have known that. Cl Darn. It was very close. Uh, Batman 800, please. Batman 800. Oh Daily my double. goodness! Keith, how much of your forty-one hundred dollars would you like He's to like, raise? Oh, all of it. True double. True yeah. double. Let's true do it. Double. Let's make okay. it a true daily, daily double, Alex. All right. Here you want is the all clue. Hot yep. dang. Nora Freeze suffers from this malady in the film Batman and Robin. McGreg what is McGregor syndrome? <laughs> that is correct. Woo. I just all watched right. that movie. Jeremy, we're not coming back. No, we can. This. We'll come back. <laughs> we can come back. This There's is no a way I will financially recover from this. <laughs> I, I just got, yeah, that was, I got lucky there. Hey, it's a perfect time to do a blackout. Yeah, seriously. Well, uh, I'll take Batman for 600. All right, just so people can see the blackout. Thank you for the cheer, Ryan. Uh, oh, Batman thanks, for Ryan. six. Batman was created by this dynamic duo. Keith? Who are Bob Kane and Bill Finger? That is correct. Woo! Batman for 400. <laughs> Batman's first appearance was in Detective Comics 27, released in this year. Keith? 1938. Let me double check here. Crap. That is incorrect. Uh, oh, even, no. He I, lost $400. Do I even guess or just uh, let it go? No, you should guess. It's I'm, either 37 or 39. Anybody? <laughs> no, 1939 is the correct answer. Oof, um, I would have guessed 37. <laughs> All right, Keith, the board is still yours. Uh, Batman for 200. This actor stars as Batman in Tim Burton's 1989 film of the same name. Jeremy. Who is Michael Keaton. Correct. Woof. All right, I almost blanked until the last possible second. <laughs> uh, Spider Man for 200. Spider Man 200. This actress appeared in Melancholia following her turn as Mary Jane Watson. Who is Keith? Kirsten Dunst? Correct. Oh. Right. Spider Man for 400. Alfred Molina portrays this many armed menace in Spider Man 2. Keith? Oh. Who is Dr. Octopus? Correct. Oh, I thought we were going My for the screen. actor. No, the Alvin Merlina is the name of the actor. <laughs> Got it. Spider-Man for 600. Running for three years on Broadway, this Spider-Man musical debuted in 2011. <sighs> Keith? Uh, what is Into the Shadows? Incorrect. Kara or Jeremy? Nope. Mm -mm. The correct answer is turn off the dark. Mm. Ah. Oh. All right, uh, Keith, I believe the board is still yours. Spider-Man for eight. Oh, whoops, I hit the wrong button, sorry. <laughs> the web-slinging hero is the favorite superhero of this president, the 44th. Keith. Who is Barack Obama? Correct. I should have known that one, too. I was going to say that. You beat me. He actually, he made it into a uh, Spider-Man comic book. Oh, cool. He was very excited about that. Uh, Spider-Man for 1,000. 1,000. <clears throat> this professional wrestler portrayed Bonesaw in 2002's Spider-Man. Uh, 
trying to think of a professional wrestler that was in the Spider-Man. correct answer is Randy Savage. <laughs> <laughs> I've never gotten that. In my I, mean, I would have gotten that, but just because I like Randy Savage, I couldn't get Randy Rhodes out of my head, and I'm like, <laughs> <laughs> Rhodes is a guitar player. <laughs> <laughs> That's funny. All right, Keith, the board is still yours. Oh, um, Superman for two hundred. All right. This Italian plumber made his debut as the hero in Jumpman in the 1981 video game Donkey Kong. Kara. Who is Mario? Incorrect. What? What? Look at the category. Oh, Superman. Keith or Jeremy? Oh, oh it was Jeremy. Who is Jeremy? Super Mario? Correct. Uh, F it all. Mario or Superman for 400. <laughs> <laughs> Following their blockbuster first console, this home video game was, system was released by Nintendo in 1990. Keith. What is Nintendo Entertainment System? Incorrect. <gasps> Kara? What is Super Mario Bros? Incorrect. <laughs> what is the Super Nintendo? <laughs> oh, Super Nintendo. I just said I didn't read the console part. <laughs> My brain. I'm like, I just had a said total. said Nintendo. I was like, oh, no, Keith. So, that was so dumb. Oh. <laughs> that was so dumb. <laughs> Superman for 600. Oh, my God. 600. Weaponizing water. This brand of summer weaponry was first released in 1990. Keith. What is a super soaker? Correct. Superman for eight. This hero debuted in Action Comics number one in 1938. Keith. Who is Superman? <laughs> Correct. Uh, Superman for 1,000. 1,000. You would call this person if your apartment were to need a repair. The Jeremy. Super. Who is the super? Uh, judges. Yeah, we'll give it to you. Superintendent is correct. <laughs> I was going to okay. say. Yeah, that, that works. Judges. You got to call the soup, you know? That's <laughs> what they say. Oops, I forgot to. But I almost didn't do it in the form of a question. <laughs> I was so nervous. Uh, All is right. it me? Yeah. yeah, so remember, Music Man is not a category. Yeah, category. I'll do the Isle of Man for 400. <laughs> For 400 to get it out of the way. Without this traffic rule, the aisle would be compared to the Autobahn. Uh, Jeremy. I, did, I was slow turning the thing off, so Jeremy. Uh, what is the speed limit? Correct. Whew. Whew. Uh, Isle of Man for 200. This self-governing island is a dependency of this sovereign state. Really hard for a $200 question. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the correct answer is the United Kingdom. Oh, wow. Oh. Huh. All right. Jeremy, the board is still yours. Uh, buy a man for 1000 1000 The Manx cat, native to the Isle of Man, lacks this distinctive feature. I'm already losing, so why not? What is a tail? That is correct. Ooh. Boom! Wow. <laughs> I did not know that. <laughs> I was going to go with whiskers. <laughs> uh, let's go Isle of Man for eight. For 800. Whoops. That's, <laughs> don't look at that. That was the wrong button. <laughs> <laughs> there are questions in there. They're, they're placeholder questions. Uh. The fairy safety video is performed by this actor, perhaps more famous as Gimli in The Lord of the Rings. Who is John Rice Davies? Correct. Oof. Uh, last 600, please. 600 to finish the game. The Logatian sheep, unique to the aisle, features four of these. Jeremy. What are horns? That is correct. Uh, so I was going to guess, you lucky turd. Woohoo! Man, that was Still a- not enough to come back from that Batman daily double. That was a tough category, though. That, that was a tough category. Wow, that, yep. Well, I- so at the end of Double Jeopardy... Woo! In third place with 3,500 is Kara. In second with 4,900 is Jeremy. And uh, unless you guys want me to try and come up with a final Jeopardy question, Keith is the winner with 10,000. Good job, Keith. And the first time ever, let's let Keith have this one. (laughs) That is an impressive feat, Keith. I was sitting here doing my math, figuring out how much I could wager in uh, final Jeopardy. So you could wager what? I was going to wager like, like 5,000, I think you could get it. Or no, if oh. Jeremy doubled up 1,200, I think would be most you could wager. There we go. Math. So there we go. That That is that Jeopardy. super fun. That was fun. Thank yeah, you for putting that together, Chris. It right. Right. Yeah, in the final in final Jeopardy. Right. So, yeah, I was looking at your, like, I was like, oh, if your score's doubled, <laughs> I don't want to wager too much. Right. <laughs> yep. All in or all out. 
Um, so that that was really fun. And I know, like, um, on our computer at home, OBS is very finicky. So it's like if my computer's on for any extended period of time and we try to use the webcam, I have to restart the whole computer to yeah. get the stuff to work. And then the game won't come in. So it's like you have to restart it four times. So yep. the fact that you were to pull this off, Chris, in uh, OBS impressive. on the computer is unbelievable. And this is just waiting to be a... There's no tutorial for this. I feel like Brownie's the real winner here. Chris is you, the real you winner won. here. Like, yeah. this, was, this was a huge success. I, well I'm glad that it actually worked. I was very stressed out that it was going to be a thing. No, it, was, it, like, it worked like perfect. Though. That was flawless. Yeah. For real. So how's, I don't know if anybody who's watching knows how long that took. I know a standard <laughs> game of uh, Jeopardy is you know, 22 minutes plus commercials. So. I think that took about 20 minutes because I think we started at like... 7.48, I think, is when we started, and it's 8.10 now. And that right, was well, with banter. If we were just, like, flying the way they do yeah, an do, actual yeah. Jeopardy, you could throw in some Dove commercials. And <laughs> 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 well, yeah, do an ad roll, you know. <laughs> Yo, that's what I should do. We should be like, okay, we're going to go to a break and then just roll an ad on Twitch. <laughs> <laughs> what we need to do is, no, we need to ha you need to make ads for Brickable or something like that. Oh, oh yeah. yeah. That would be cool. That's cool. And make up, you can make, like, one of those, uh, oh, gosh, what's... Affleck, where they're always like doing a commercial <laughs> that's like a Jeopardy pun at the same time. Yeah, I love Affleck. Yeah, I'll do yep. some bumps or something with it. Um, boy, this is a humongous tangent. I was reading it like insurance doesn't make any sense, right? <laughs> For a lot of people, car insurance. No, I'm serious. This is a tangent. We're doing this role. We're doing. We're talking tangent. about insurance. Um, tangent time. So, nice, Kara. Uh, like the, you think the longer you're with a company, you you know you get a good rate and they'd want to keep you as a customer. But so much of it is now computer formulas. So um, a guy had posted on Reddit. He said that I've been with my insurance company for 10 years. I've never gotten an accident. And they double my rates out of nowhere. Oh, my gosh. And so he called them up, and they would not do any better. And he's like, I can hop over to a different company and get my old rate back. And they said that because they had been with the company so long without an accident, odds are he's going to get in one. What? Oh, so, so, so they want to get rid of so him. So they want to get rid of him because wow. they had him for all of this time. They don't want them anymore. That's ridiculous. But when you get taken on as a new customer, there's like a high percentage of as a new customer, you don't get an accident. So it's like, because you're driving more carefully because you're like with a new insurance company and you're not going to, you know, so it's like what? another company is willing wow. to take that risk now. And yeah, that's what you kind of have to jump around, which is But don't goal. most people like not want to get in an accident because you know your insurance will go up, so don't you? Oh, I don't think anyone wants to get into an accident ever, but apparently computers think you're more likely to be in an accident if you haven't Silly. been in one for a I while. I guess, yeah, Silly. the longer you haven't been in one, the higher your odds mm. are, I guess. <laughs> I just can't. That's like saying you're, like, due for an accident or something. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just can't. That's just the funniest filter <laughs> on you, Keith. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> um, I do know. I like how ineffective it is on Jeremy. It just, like, falls off. Can we see if your armpit hair goes away? <laughs> <laughs> oh, 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 no, it's, it's a banana. banana. Uh, Tiffany said she figured out Twitch. Oh, yeah. I, I, I totally forgot to. Yeah, she, she texted me, too. Okay. <laughs> That's kind of fun. I am a banana. Banana ran and banana. <laughs> I hang in a bunch. I want to be your lunch. Sorry, that's not my song. It belongs <laughs> Cam to says it's uh, the insurance thing is a uh, basic game theory, mm. apparently. Oh, so. interesting. As funny enough, we were just playing a game. Is Cam that did say a, like, also that we need to play Jeopardy again. Well, did oh, Cam cool. have fun? Another time. Yeah, yeah. so Chad, did you guys have a good time with that? Because that was like, the, a lot of that was the mechanics of me actually figuring out how to, I didn't start writing questions for it until this morning. It was me getting everything working, so. Well, let me ask you this. How easy is it for you to update your questions, Chris? So now all I have to, do, like, so the, I, I just go into the Photoshop document, like, each, let me, where's the thing here? Button. I can't believe actually OBS ran that. That's all I'm saying. <sighs> so each of the tiles here, Basically, imagine a grid system. So it's category one, two, three, four, five, six. Yeah. And then it's the dollar amount two, four, six, eight, one thousand. So six, two hundred, six, four hundred, six, six hundred, six, eight hundred. That's the name of the file. I just save over the file. With oh, a question. interesting. Just so like Holmes by Edmonds. It's Holmes by Edmonds. It yeah. really is. <laughs> Brilliant. Interesting. I gained a skill at work that I could apply to not work. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. So and that's, that's, awesome. that's one thing I miss out on is with my job, I pack parachutes. So it's like, I don't really use any of those skills in my daily. Okay. I take it back. The knots. I, I know a lot of knots. So he I knows how to knots. sew. Yeah. That's are good. But that's, you know, do I have you know, a hole. Do you know pocket. the square knot? I do know the square knot. Do you know two half hitches? I do. Timber hitch. Nope. Not a timber hitch. I know the timber hitch. 
Bowling. He's like, bad disrespect for Jeremy's knot skills now. <laughs> no, see, no, I'm, I'm glad he said no, because at that point I had run, ran out of knots to name. <laughs> uh, no, I, in Boy Scouts, we obviously, you know, yeah. Boy Scout, you got to know the Boy Scout knots. There's a song, and I think it's like, who does this guy think he is? The king of knots? <laughs> Drinking out of cups? It's a, or a classic YouTube video. But no, like, bowline is one we use a lot. Oh, uh, slip, yeah. Slip I knots, remember the bowline. And then, yep, half hitch. Um, slip slip hitch. I wanted to get this for my dad. My dad knows every knot in the universe. But the problem is, it's expensive. It's $53. Oh, my gosh. What's it called? Wow. It's called the Ashley Book of Knots. The Ashley Book. I was like, the Man. Ashley Book of Knots. So like they just it has like the instant if I can get through all the content and stuff. It has like the history of knots and what they were used oh, for cool. and everything. And then it shows you like how to actually tie <laughs> the knot. That's cool. I mean, think about that. At some point in time, somebody had to create the knot for one reason or another. And now it's just like it's in books. It's yeah, just like each specific knot. Each specific yeah. knot. Yeah. Like every single one you just named. Somebody came thing. up with that, you know? Do you see this insane knot? What's number 12? Probably a bowline. 12. That's the one that you, oh, yeah, right. You, I remember like you, because it's like the rescue knot. You tie it around your waist. Yeah. Yep. Like that, I guess that's just called a hitch. Pull it through, yep. right? Yep. Yeah. So Do that's. You know the, have you ever heard of the sheep shank? No. Yes. That is one, if you want to take a length of rope and make it half as long without having to untie either end, it's basically, it's like a shortening knot. It's a pretty cool one. That's mm. cool. Daisy yeah, chain. Uh, I know how to daisy chain. Oh, I don't know that. Yeah, it's fun. You take one slip knot, so you can also do this with rope to make it smaller. Take a slip knot, you pass the line through the slip knot, and when you pull that tight, it makes a new slip knot, and you just keep slip knotting over and over oh. and over and over again, and you you do that. It's a daisy chain of slip knots. And it brings the rope way down. You pull one end and the whole thing comes out. Yep. Wow. It's kind of fun. So I you feel can, like there's a heavy metal pun in there somewhere. <laughs> I keep saying Slipknot. It's like, the band, the band, the band, the band. Um, but no. And it, it's, <laughs> Ryan says the Halle Berry knot. <laughs> <laughs> that is a Weird Al reference. Mary Berry knot. Yeah. Yeah, we're all to Lincoln Berries. Uh, Cam says the granny knot or the sheep bend. Yeah, the, I remember those. I don't remember exactly how they go, but I remember the names. Um, do you remember we sports? Yeah, uh, we had Tiffany who was watching or was watching. We had a, we were, there's a new one for Nintendo Switch. We played Switch Bowling, <clears throat> and she won the first or second game, and she granny bowled the whole game. Night. Oh, and she totally won. She got the most strikes. It was kind of fun. I mm -hmm. think I remember the granny knot. Isn't it's like that was Cam, right? Yeah. So Cam, it's like a square knot, except over left over right, right over left. You do left over right, left over left. You do left over right twice. Is that it? See if he remembers. I'm sure he does. This dude's an encyclopedia for like everything. Cam yep. blows awesome. my mind with how yep. much knowledge he has. Not that this is very interesting, but uh, so another knot we use is a surgeon's knot with an overhand locking knot. So a surgeon's knot, you just, you just do one and then another one. And Cam said, yes, you're correct. And then awesome. Lock, and just do an overhand knot over the top of it. That's a <laughs> surgeon's with an overhand locking knot. The nice. underhand knot's the one that always bilks you out of your money. <laughs> 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 So oh All my right. gosh. So uh, during uh, Single Jeopardy, we talked to our audience slightly, and Keith had mentioned that he's working on a documentary about local uh, nerd groups. You want to talk a little bit more about your project? Yeah, so the documentary is going to be called Nerds Doing Good. Um, and so I learned that many cosplay groups have public service components to what they do. Um, a lot of them work with Make-A-Wish Foundation. But here we've got local Ghostbusters um, who do, you know, they've got proton packs and flight yep. suits. And a lot of them have actually been on this show before. Absolutely. As yep. recently as last week. <laughs> <Yep>. <laughs> Matt Rasmussen. And uh, so local Ghostbusters donate uh, time and money to Ronald McDonald House. So I've done interviews with a bunch of the local Ghostbusters. Um, Matt Rasmussen got me video from Ghostbusters all around the Midwest saying what per public cool. service efforts they support. Um, I've interviewed folks from Ronald McDonald House Charities here in Duluth. Mm. And um, so, yeah, that's what I'm working on right now. Cool. I don't know how long it'll be or when it'll be done, um, but I'm going to be shooting some more video this week with Jeremy, who if you live in Duluth, you've probably seen the Ecto-1 that Jeremy okay. owns. It is a souped-up Ecto-1 car with... Oh, oh, he's got the car. There's all this, like, gear on top and flashing lights, and it's got the... You know, the 
the prototypical um, Ghostbusters siren on it, and it's just awesome. So he's doing a car show on Wednesday, so I'm going to go out there with him and shoot a bunch of video, and uh, yeah, it's really fun. Cool. Oh, it's Quick really touchback to the knots. Cam says he was an Eagle Scout. So no. that, If you were here, I would do the secret handshake with you, because <laughs> I, too, am an Eagle Scout. <laughs> That's awesome. I never do that, Keith. Yeah, and, we, and there is a secret handshake. That's pretty cool. Here is a car. I mean, you probably it's probably microscopic on your phone screen, but it was it was actually down at our building one time. And did your mom get to go for a ride, Chris? Yeah, she. It was during the West End flourish. Yeah. Oh, she took a ride in the Ecto One. Yeah. Did. So oh, yeah, cool. the, the guys had all come in here like they were like bothering you for a second. Then my mom like walked outside and they were going to the car and she's like, "Oh, you guys are the like, Ghostbusters." I was like, "Yeah, I got the car and everything." And like he he had just driven it down here and then the <laughs> flourish was like, "Oh, you should have people like look at it and stuff." So he like got assimilated into the event. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but then he was going to like going to leave, but he's like, "Oh, if you want to ride in it, so like, there's a video of my mom like cruising around in the passenger seat." That's hilarious. I think. Don't quote me on this, but I think like half the huh. time that's just like his vehicle that he just like drives drives around. Drives around yeah, it. that's the way to do cool. it. That uh, is awesome. Brad said he quit Boy Scouts because of the secret handshake. <laughs> <laughs> Brad oh, strikes me as somebody who Cam said the Eagle Scout said what secret handshake? <laughs> oh, he knows the secret. He knows the handshake. <laughs> I think wink. What wink. he says virtual secret handshake, not what secret oh, handshake. Oh, that's my glasses. Virtual looks like what if you can't see? Yeah, <laughs> I don't want to do it on camera though, because then, then yeah, it's, then it's not a secret yeah, anymore. Be able to replicate it. Calm um, down. While, I've already said too much. <laughs> while we were here last week. Kara was given the task to watch oh, Mars yeah. attacks, and yes. she owes us a movie review. So, Kara, Chris, you guide. I'll shut up. All right, Kara, your film that you were tasked to watch was? Uh, Mars Attacks. All right, Mars Attacks. So what was your favorite scene of Mars Attacks? <sighs> I think my favorite scene, Jeremy, I, I told this to Jeremy earlier, um, I thought it was kind of funny when Danny DeVito's character decides he's going to go off on himself and he's running through that area in Vegas and the alien sees him. And he shoots him, and then the lady comes in like a split second later, and she shoots the alien. And then she's like, oh, too late, or whatever. Like, super <laughs> just nonchalant about it. There's nothing really that's like, this is a great scene. I love this, you know? So, I don't know. That so was. There were no scenes in the movie that made you feel like, wow, that was really awesome or funny or anything. No. No. I think it I'm... was just kind of a meh movie to me. Like, it was okay. All right, well, what was your least favorite know. scene? Least favorite scene? Girl. Like, I think when they first showed the, uh, um, that the lady's head had been replaced by her dog. Like, that was, I don't know. I just, there was nothing, I don't know. There weren't any, anything, nothing really stuck out. It was just kind of very monotonous movie for me. Everything was just kind of equal. There okay. was nothing that was great, nothing that was horrible. Just kind of. I think the critics of the day said pretty much the same thing. Okay. I don't think it was a very well-reviewed movie. Yeah, okay. There you go. Boom. So um, if you were to recommend this film to somebody who you think would enjoy it, who would you recommend it to? <laughs> uh, if you like movies like, um, oh gosh, Top it's only secret. a flesh wound. Monty oh, Python. Monty, Monty Python, Python oh. Top Gun, yeah, Airplane, stuff Top like Gun, that. Top Secret. Top Secret, sorry, Top Secret, not Top Gun. Top Gun's excellent. Just watched that, actually, the other day. Um, yeah, I feel like those kind of movies, like that kind of humor, I guess. Rating, right. I'd give it like a six. All right, and then would That's you ever good, watch actually. the film again? Nah, I'm good. <laughs> That's it? Nah, I'm, I don't need to watch it again. What don't if Chip wants to watch it? Jeremy and Chip can watch it. That's fine. I'll go and... <laughs> Watch something else. <laughs> uh, I had, it's Kara's movie review, but I haven't watched the movie in a long time. I really enjoyed the scene where the mom goes and stops the two kids at the video game store. She like stops. The that was bus. funny, actually thinking and about yeah, it. She grabs them on the ear. She throws them on the bus. And, and then they write cheers. Okay, I changed. That is my favorite scene. Okay. <laughs> and then when they're the two, I forgot on about the last it. Field trip, and they save the president. They're like. Like the Secret Service is all freaking out, and the two kids grab the laser guns and they're protecting. They're like, "Get him to safety! What are you doing?" And they're like protecting the president. It was those two scenes were really both funny to me. But there was a million celebrities in that movie. Yeah, yeah. literally a million. And I told Jeremy when we were watching, I was like, "They must have been so sick of doing like your typical serious movie or like you know action movie, whatever, that they just wanted a stupid movie to be in." You yeah. know. 
Jack Nicholson is a really good actor. Oh, that's right. He plays the president. He's the president, I and he's good about at it. Isn't he also the Doesn't, cowboy dude in Vegas? Yes, yes he's two roles. Doesn't yeah. he have a... Oh, God. There was one line that my dad would always quote from Jack Nicholson when he's, like, addressing the nation on television. Do you remember? I don't remember. He's got a funny, funny, funny line in that movie. He's oh, well. really good in that movie. He is really good. No, he's very good. You have good Danny president. DeVito. You have who played Nancy Reagan? Glenn Close. Uh, yes, Glenn uh, Sarah Close, Jessica Sarah Parker, Parker, Parker Pierce Brosnan. Pierce is it, Brosnan. Is was it in the it? two out of three branches of government quote? Yeah, <laughs> and that ain't bad. <laughs> <laughs> My dad would oh, say yeah. that all the time. <laughs> I want the American people to know we've got two out of three branches, the American government functioning, and that ain't bad. <laughs> <laughs> it's really funny too when France calls him and they're like. Oh yeah, we're we're totally good. We're gonna let them in. They want to negotiate with us, and the Jack Nicholson's like, "No, don't do it." And they're all getting blasted because yep. they just keep trolling everybody with their, you know, like, "Oh, we're gonna we're gonna be peaceful." Ark, ark. So, you know, it it just know. like it just now occurs to me that Tim Burton kind of went on like a cheesy '50s sci-fi bender because he did Ed Wood. I don't know if that was before or after Mars Attacks. But then he, I think he was probably like, after all this time researching Ed Wood, he's like, you know what? I kind of want to make my own cheesy sci-fi 50s movie. Mm -hmm. That was before, Ed Wood was before. Was it? He's like, you know, this Ed Wood guy had it all figured out. I'm going to make, I made the Ed Wood biopic. Now I'm going to just make an Ed Wood movie. (laughs) It it was surprising to see Tim Burton pop up. I never associated that movie with him. No. And I'm surprised his uh, girlfriend wasn't it. What's her name? Um, Helena Bonham Bonham Carter. Carter. Yes. Yeah. Surprised she wasn't in it because she's like in every single movie that Tim Burton's ever made. I, you know what? I actually, I wonder when they got together because I feel like, and when I think of like Tim Burton, like later Tim Burton, mm-hmm. but I don't think she's in did he, a whole lot of early Tim did Burton. Did he do she? Edward Scissorhands? Yes. And I don't think she's in that. Yeah. But I think she. Did what? she do a voice in Corpse Bride? Is she the voice of the Corpse Bride? I think so. I think she's so definitely. Too. She is. Uh, Two thousand one is when they started dating. Okay. When? So did, when is when that? Did, um, Nightmare Before Christmas. They met while filming Planet of the Apes. Uh, oh. oh, is she in that movie? She must be. Huh. huh. Nightmare Before Christmas. What? Yeah. When did Nightmare Before Christmas come out? Nightmare Before Christmas was like nineteen ninety four or something. Isn't she in that? <laughs> I think. I th- isn't she Sally in that? Oh. 1993. I don't know. Although, if you watch the movies that made this, to bring it back around, Tim Burton was actually not really on set at all for that movie. He was... Really? Yeah, because he didn't direct it, um, even though it's called Tim Burton's A Nightmare Before Christmas. I think he really was kind of the pre-production guy. I think he did like oh. character designs, oh. storyboards, oh, and stuff like that. That and makes he sense. He might have drafted the script, but then okay. I think... Somebody else directed it? Somebody else directed it, and I think it was being made at the same time as Batman Returns. Oh. So I think he was just not really involved with the making of the actual movie. That's pretty cool. Yeah. There, there's a Movies That Made Us episode all about it, and it's... it's they good. must have added... Henry Selleck directed it. Yes. And I think... I don't want to quote him here, but I think he's probably a bit bitter that Tim Burton gets... So much credited credit. with it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, so Tim Burton wrote... The it was based on a poem that Tim Burton wrote, and he wrote the story and produced it. So I can see why he gave himself top billing. <laughs> yeah, and like, and if he did all the pre-production stuff, like the story was, I'm not saying that doing the animation isn't a thing, but you already all the choices are already made. You just make it match the animatic or the storyboard, right? Yeah. yeah. So it's like, what did he actually do? Direct the performance, maybe I guess. Yeah. Hm. I'm not and, trying to just diminish what he did. did. All the stop motion animation. I don't know. I guess if I, I'm trying to think of like an example of like a, okay. So if, you know, Christopher Nolan, for instance, produced Justice League, could you imagine if it was like Christopher Nolan's Justice League? And then the director's cut would have been Christopher Nolan's Zack Snyder's Justice League. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. It's just weird for like the, uh, yeah. you know, I mean, it's a special case because well, I mean, it was kind few- of Tim Burton's vision, even though he didn't direct the film. Uh, the on the DVD for at least the the Blu-ray edition, or sorry, on the case for at least the Blu-ray edition, if not the regular three movie collect, collection, it says Steven Spielberg on the top of Back to the Future. Oh yeah, that's right. I, I remember seeing that. 
So even though he was just the the producer for it. Right. I think and, and he was only the producer for two and three. He didn't even produce the first one. And I think, I mean, you know, Tim Burton was a very active producer as far as producers go for Nightmare Before Christmas. I'm pretty sure, don't quote me on this either, but I'm pretty sure Steven Spielberg on Back to the Future was like, I'm the famous guy who can get money and this movie should be made. Yeah, that's like, right. Like, yeah, he didn't a, do. Yeah, didn't which do. Which is a lot of time what a producer is. So, like, the, the, as far as he went for the first one, he just convinced the studio to do it. Like, that's all he did for the first one. Right. And then he actually was, like, a little bit more involved in two and three. But, yeah, he basically was just like, these guys do the thing. <laughs> right. You know, and going back to Christopher Nolan, like, when they were making uh, his third Batman movie, they got an idea for Superman, right? So he went to the studio and he's like, hey, you guys should do a Superman movie and you should kind of do it this way. But I don't want to make it. So they got Zack Snyder. So really, he was just like, do a Superman movie, guys. You know, I don't even think he was involved in writing the story or anything, right? So he gets a producer credit for just being like, make this movie. <laughs> but it's not Christopher Nolan's Man of Steel, Batman v Superman, Justice League, Christopher Nolan, Zack Snyder's Justice, you know? It's just like, <laughs> I yeah. wish it was now that you say that, because I think just that's a, hilarious. Long drawn out, yeah. That's like well, a BoJack Horseman joke. <laughs> and, but I mean, it's kind of like if I was Robert Zemeckis, I'd be a little pissed. I'd be like, hey, thanks a lot, Steven, for helping me get this movie made. But it's definitely not Steven Spielberg's Back to the Future. Yeah. <laughs> it's my Back to the Future. Yep. Yeah, no, I agree completely. Yeah, I, I, I can see more in, ba or more in Nightmare Before Christmas. <laughs> Right. The justification, but yeah, like the, uh, uh, there's not a great case to be made for some of these <laughs> other ones. Yes. Yeah. And my, uh, so then another good example to bring it all back around to Star Wars is that like, you know, it's probably very, very little on fact that um, Empire Strikes Back and Return of the Jedi weren't directed by George Lucas. I was mm -hmm. going to use that as an example a couple, like a little bit ago before you came up with your first one. I was like, Empire Strikes Back, you know, everybody just assumes George Lucas, but yeah, do you actually... Pay attention. Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. we got. Is this a last minute wheel spin? By this is David a last here? minute wheel spin. Last maybe, maybe Kara has to walk on some Legos. How about Nat? Yeah. Oh, shame hat. Shame, shame hat. hat. Well, I guess while I'm doing the outro, Jeremy will have to wear the shame hat. <laughs> Well, Keith, it was a pleasure having you on. Uh, we appreciate you every time you come and join us here. Now that we have Jeopardy, hopefully you'll come back more often. This is the most fun on this show ever. This, <laughs> is, this was great. This it keeps getting good. crazier. Yep, this is so good. <laughs> uh, to those of you who are doing the audio-only version of the podcast, I apologize once again. All of the things that happened here were a complete waste of time for you, but you can always join us live on Saturday nights at twitch.tv slash the podcast or... You can always check our old episodes out at youtube.com slash rise of the podcast. All of our back catalog is there. You can see what we look like. Happened. You can participate with the games. You can see all the crazy stuff that we describe in not very great detail for your audio only <laughs> listeners, but that is always an option. If you are watching on YouTube, don't forget to like the video and comment down below with um, what your favorite Star Wars ship is. Bring it all the way down to the beginning. Uh, it's always a good time hanging out with all of you guys here live on Saturday nights on twitch.tv slash rise the podcast. And, uh, you know, just uh, you guys make it like super fun. And uh, I appreciate everybody here for what they're doing. And all that said, oh, we, ah, Ryan, you jerk. I totally forgot. We need to do a raid. <laughs> <laughs> Who are you raiding? Um, all right. So, just yeah. real quick is the bald filter. The bald filter is applying to the shame hat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's That's like hilarious. trying to force it. <laughs> <laughs> you still got the boob on top. <laughs> <laughs> Somebody screenshot that, please. That is amazing. Somebody clip that. Oh my god! I can't believe what it did that. That is unbelievable. <laughs> who, who redeemed that? Dave, you're a legend. Oh, oh my goodness. Oh my gosh. Oh. Oh my gosh. Ooh, I never thought it would do that. <laughs> All right. Uh, so the raid's going to be starting in just a minute. I do want to oh say, everybody, gosh. thank you so much for joining us. Uh, feel free to jump into Chris Pearl's raid and show him some love. Uh, thanks, everybody, so much for watching. And, of course, may the force be with you. 